72. That's a little different, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just leave those flaps in. Let's just make a left, left turn and hit our left down way. My dad and I drove up to AirVenture 2019 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin because our airplane is currently down for some major maintenance. You can check out the video explaining all of that on my channel. A buddy of mine invited me out to Camp Cub, a private grass strip just outside the northern bounds of the Oshkosh airspace. Carbon Cub has created a new beast as a market survey, the NX Cub. Effectively, this is the X Cub equipped with a nose wheel configuration, so yes, it's a Cub with a nose wheel. As a sidebar, I will say it's been absolutely hilarious watching the Die Hard tailwheel people absolutely lose their minds over this on social media. This airplane is also equipped with a 215 horsepower Lycoming engine and from what I've been told it actually gets off the ground quicker and gets down and stopped quicker than the tailwheel X-Cub because of its natural tail high stance. So basically for takeoff you don't even have to get the tail flying first, you just put the stick in your lap and hammer the throttle and the nose starts flying immediately. I'm with the world famous Mike Sasser <laughs> here. And what is this thing behind us here? Tell me a little bit about this airplane. So this is our uh, Cub Crafters new market survey NX Cub. Uh, it's the first nose wheel Cub product for Cub Crafters. Going full power with the stick in my lap like that, the nose just immediately comes off the ground. Yep. And of course I heard the stall, the stall warning chirp and you were like, get that nose up. <laughs> Don't yeah. be afraid of it. Yeah. It's an absolutely amazing airplane. So why, why did, why is Cub Crafters doing this survey? Well, so we've got FAA database information that says that 15% of all pilots are tailwheel pilots. So there's an 85% market out there that we're missing on that. And, and we, we feel like there's a market sector there that we want to, we want to try to capture and tap into. We've got guys that don't want to mess with trying to master the tailwheel, and this airplane opens up that opportunity for them to be able to go in the backcountry and do what you know everybody's all excited about in the backcountry stuff right now. And this gives us another tool uh, to be able to offer to our customers to do that. So how's this airplane equipped as far as avionics and engine? So it's got the G3X panel in it with the Garmin Autopilot, and uh, it's got the new CC393i 215-horse uh, Lycoming engine in it that Lycoming's building for Cub Crafters. So it's a it's a significant increase in horsepower over the the uh, standard X Cub 180-horse carbureted engine. This one's fuel injected, and it's got some power. Yeah. it certainly has some power. So today we're gonna go take a demo flight. What are we gonna go do? What are you What are you gonna make me do? So I'm gonna <laughs> show you, give you a little bit of. Uh, Technique on the takeoff, it's a little bit different than the normal tail wheel takeoff. We're, since we're already in a tail high angle of attack, it'll be a little bit different. Um, you're coming out of a 172, so the sight picture is going to be about the same, but we're just going to be able to be a little more aggressive getting the tail down and flying straight off the mains. And then we'll come back and do some short field landings, and you'll be amazed at how short it'll land and how short it'll stop. Absolutely. Well, super excited. So we're going to hop in this amazing NX Cub, and we're going to go take it for a flight. So good on camera. So standard hot start procedure, mixture is going to be out, I'll run the throttle and then just crank and then push it in nice and smooth once it fires off. Gotcha. Okay, okay. left three switches on, yep, and then all of these can be on, they may already be, okay, they are. perfect, alright, we're ready to crank, clear, all the way out, all the way out, start with the mixture all the way out, and then, oh, oh, you broke my uh, airplane, so you may need to run that nut in, Josh little bit so you can get that threaded on there. Sorry about that. I'll get it. I didn't have it backed up tight on it. I'll get it. All right. Yeah. Hey, clear. Recastering, so you're going to have to tap the brakes to get it to turn. You're Mr. Sears driver. <laughs> That's right. All right.
Yeah, I feel that nose gear. Yeah. All right. So that di there's a pretty good dish right there, so let's just go to the left, okay, kind of well, around, and then follow that yellow cub out. Good deal. Hickory traffic, got a white X cub coming out of the parking. So I understand this airplane was scrapped. So, yep, it was. It was a wreck uh, that Cubcrafters bought back uh, from uh, on salvage, and we had rebuilt it as a tailwheel in the standard tailwheel configuration for an X-Cub, and was basically going to remarket it. And then uh, they decided they were going to move forward with the survey nose wheel in X-Cub, and so. Jim Richmond said, let's get after it and let's make it happen for Oshkosh. And that was about 90 days ago. They did that quick. Yeah, really quick. But it's pretty easy to convert the tailwheel carbon cup to a nose wheel. So, the, on the X-Cub, I mean, the X-Cub was originally designed to be able to convert to a nose wheel, believe it or not. That okay. really wasn't released to the public much gotcha. on that. Okay, let's run up to about 1,900 RPM. Okay. And let's check the fuel flow and we'll make an adjustment on the mixture from that. Maybe in with it a little bit. There you go. Okay, went back down to 1900. We want about six gallons an hour, so a little bit more, in, a couple more clicks on the mixture. Get it up close to six. Gotcha. Okay, and it takes it a little bit to stabilize, so that's perfect. All right, we're good on back checking everything. Pull it back to idle and, and release that window for me. And it's right. right here. There you go. All right. Kind of pull in on that, just down. All right, and X Cubs departing to the north out of Hickory. Set a notch of flaps, Josh, and you're going to have to squeeze that trigger. There you go, perfect. All right, okay, ready to go. Ready to go. Yep. So the prison that's in front of you, we're going to need to make a left turn. Just turn to the left of that last tower right there. That's it. And then we're going to actually go, to, we're going to work our way up to Brennan and That's get some fuel. So uh, that'll give you a little bit more time. Oh, yeah. Uh, to work through it and let you play with it a little bit more than normal. But, so the X Cub was, when, they, when it was originally designed, they had the nose wheel in mind. They wanted it to be convertible from tail wheel to nose wheel. Okay. So the framework was in the engineering and design was actually built into the fuselage from the get-go on that. Okay. Uh, they, they, uh, the original intent was to be able to use the same landing gear just to be able to turn it around in the same mount and change the angle of it, but that didn't work out. We needed it further back for the nose wheel, so we actually have two different mounting positions on the fuselage. Okay. Right. So if you were to buy a NX Cub in the nose wheel configuration and you wanted to switch it to the tail wheel configuration, you would, it would be coming, uh, it'd be come as a kit, just like you would get a set of floats. So it would have another steel, uh, aluminum spring gear that you would just put into the other position, transfer over your wheels and brakes, and you're good to go. Pull out the nose wheel, put the tail wheel assembly on, and you're good to go. Very smooth flying airplane. I've never flown a carbon yeah. gas like yeah. this. Well, and that's, you know, so that's the, the big deal on the FX series and the X Cup series is the Adelons. Uh, it's got a, what we call the G series, Adelon and Flap, so they're a totally different design than the Carbon Cub SS, uh, which, you know, most of the, most people associate Carbon Cub with that model. Okay. So this aileron is a much nicer, it's a symmetrical aileron, so the airflow is totally different over it. And basically you're getting, it's kind of like a spade without having to attach a spade to it. Uh, it's, and it's much lighter on the uh, stick forces. Oh yeah, it's really a nice flying airplane. Well, I mean, just to do these, you know, very gentle turns, left yep. right. Yep. I mean, or, you know, it's, it takes nothing to move it. Yeah, nothing at all. And if you come out of a, like, in, you know, from one, from a 30 degree bank to the left, and then roll it right into a 30 degree bank to the right, it is, it's actually really nice flying airplane. So oh, yeah. Tremendous roll rate. I mean, it, yeah, incredibly responsive. Doesn't take much at all. Super light stick forces. Wow. Very nice. So they, they completed this airplane in, what do you say, 90 days? Yeah, yeah they, they pulled it together as far as uh, making the new cowling for it. 
with this IO390 in the tenant of the CC393i is kind of what Cup Crafters is a pro it's a proprietary engine that Wycoming is making for Cup Crafters. Okay. So it's not a standard IO390 like in the Cirrus SR20. Uh, it's a variation of that with some Cup, Cup Crafter custom parts on it. Uh, we've, it's, uh, so they make it for us, we send them the kit, they make up the engine, and that's, and it's, so the cowling is a totally different cowling, it's an inch and a half wider, the air inlets are much bigger than the standard X-Cub, you probably noticed that with the yeah. X-Cub sitting there, yeah. um, due to the angle valve out, uh, engine uh, versus the uh, parallel valve engine that is in it in the 0360 series. Okay. I understand this airplane will actually get off the ground quicker than a tailwheel. It will. Yep, absolutely due to the angle of attack um, set up on it, it will get off the ground quicker than the standard X-Cub. Um, and it definitely it will stop quicker than the standard X-Cub because you're basically going to fly it. Uh, you know, on the, on the X-Cub, we push the stick forward, bring the tail up, and then we, then we pull back. Well, we're starting with the tail already up in this airplane. So right. there's the... Uh, it's, it definitely makes things happen a lot quicker when we start in that flight attitude. Oh, yeah. Same thing on the landing, we're going to land it in a tail low, kind of in a semi three-point attitude, but once the mains touch, you know, we can get on the brakes and, and the nose wheel come down with the trailing link suspension. It, uh, it just sucks it up and you can pretty much stand on the brakes. That's great. Now, we're not worried about the tail coming up like we do with the tail wheel airplane, so definitely a much quicker stopping distance with the, with the nose wheel configuration. Uh, I'm sure that chaps a lot of tailwheel enthusiasts. Yeah, they're, I mean, the naysayers are, you know, oh, that's not a Cub, it's not a Cub, it's not a backcountry airplane, but we've taken it, in the flight testing, yeah, we've actually up, taken it in some pretty aggressive uh, terrain, and it has, it's, it's done very well. Oh, yeah. And we've got a, a three-blade prop that we're, Hartzell's developing for it, and that'll give us even more ground clearance. But it, right, right now, as it stands, it meets the Part 23 ground clearance uh, standards that you would have like on a 172, 182, or whatever, any certified airplane. Right. So it's got more ground clearance than what people think it does. Uh, they just, everybody thinks, oh, the top's going to be so close to the ground that. because of the way the trailing link works. Uh, right. It's really not the issue. On that takeoff roll, I just had full back stick. Yep. And, uh, and as soon as the airplane was starting to fly, just start to release that back pressure, and then it, yeah, she's going yep. Just flies right off in, yeah. a, in a nose-high attitude. Yeah, absolutely. It's very intuitive on that. All right, there's 81. Notch one. And how many notches do we have on Three notches. Three notches. Yep. All right. Get a little bit closer and add notch two. 500. I don't see any traffic to the right. No. Looks clear to me. Brennan traffic, uh, white X-Cub, we're turning uh, final. Landing to the north of Brennan, on the pavement. Yeah, that sure does look like there's some power lines yep. there. But when you're lined up on the pavement, you're well clear of it, both left and right. Uh, about 63 knots there. Perfect. Got to get a little closer. Yep, go ahead and get your third notch in, okay. and then let's try to get go. your speed down to about 55. Over by the lake a little bit. To yeah, the you'll have to hold that nose up in order to just carry a little bit of power. We're going to have a little bit steeper angle of attack than what you're used to. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who, it might be you. Right. I don't know who, no red cup is coming by me right now. Got a little bit of a left. How do you say it all along? No, 3-6. Pick right. Power out, power out, hold it up, hold it up, there you go, stand on the brakes. Come on, make it stop! <laughs> there you go. Cool. Be on lake one of them. Alright, we back, back yep. taxi brown. So, swing to, yeah, you can, uh, let's, no, let's do it, just back taxi no, on the tape. That way you can kind of turn it tight here. Just get on the brake. There you go. Brennan traffic, x cub back taxi. They've got a paved taxiway up there, Josh, we're going to go over, and then the fuel depot's where those towers, there you go. Gotcha. Yep. Good deal. That'll work right there. All right. Okay. Then just mixture out, and then those three switches on the left off in the mags. While we're out and about, Mike wants to put a little bit of fuel in the airplane. On that landing, I am totally not used to standing on the brakes like Mike was talking about. It makes sense, though. Stand on the brakes. Come on, make it stop. <laughs> there you go. 
This airplane doesn't run the risk of tipping forward like a tailwheel would when you hammer the brakes, so you can stop super quick if your approach is under control in this airplane. We took off out of Brennan to go do some short and soft field stuff back at the grass strip and my first approach into there was totally botched. Basically I was on downwind and hadn't even started descending yet because that's normal for the type of pattern that I fly and Mike said I needed to turn before the road to stay out of Oshkosh airspace. But that's nothing that a deep slip won't fix and this airplane doesn't even need that much runway anyways. Hold that in, we won't need any more power. We got plenty of runway. Still. Okay, let it settle. Hold it off right there. Perfect. Okay, get on the brakes. Look at that much fun. Get on the brakes. Come on. <laughs> I am totally not used to mashing them that hard. It's a cup. Heck yeah, it is. Free traffic. Uh, X Cup's going to back taxi. Blue Cup, you ready to go? No, we're going to go back in. I think we got a valve plug or something. We're going to switch airplanes. Okay. We'll taxi it in front of you. We're going to do one more takeoff and landing. Alright, we're clear of the runway. Yeah, I want to redeem myself on that one. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the road and the TFR and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. pretty close. Yeah, no, that's, they, they don't have a problem with this being right there. That's why I was, if, as long as we turn inside those wind generators, we're good on that. But Gotcha. But I would go past this intersection so they can video and uh, they'll be getting you off whenever. You'll be you'll be getting off about the time you get to them. Good deal. Yeah. So there's a pretty good low spot there. Let's turn around before that next low spot. So right up, right in here is kind of right here. Yep, yeah. perfect. Hickory traffic, X Cub be departing to the north. I know, you felt that, didn't you? <laughs> get on the brakes, get on the brakes. <laughs> We're drifting, dude. We're drifting. Heck yeah, we are. <laughs> All right, nice job. I right, appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate the ride. Yep, absolutely. All right, so we just got back with the Cub. Absolutely amazing flight. First of all, it's a, a very smooth airplane to fly. It's all push rod on the controls, right? right? right. So I've, I've never flown a, a carbon Cub in general. And of course, flying this NX Cub, it's brand new with the nose wheel. So it's, I'm familiar with it. I'm not a tailwheel pilot yet. So this, it was like a certain level of comfort and then a certain level of, oh my God, this thing's a hot rod. So absolutely awesome. Super great instructor here, at Mike Sasser. And uh, what, is, what do you do for Cup Crafters? So I am the uh, South Central dealer. I have to Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. My company's called Boomerang Air. Um, and I'm, I'm the Cub dealer for those states, for Cup Crafters. And a fellow Austin, Texas yep, resident. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Em. All right, Mike Sasser here, Cub Crafters, NX Cub. Absolutely amazing. That was an awesome flight.
While I was at Oshkosh, I got to fly the Icon A5 as well. It's basically a flying jet ski. Look out for that video next week. The NX Cub is an awesome flying machine. It handles great, and I love the stability of the tricycle gear configuration. There has already been a ton of hostility about this airplane on social media, claiming that, quote, that's not a real Cub, or it's a wannabe Cub with training wheels. But if you weed through all the self-righteous arrogance online, you'll actually find that there really are down-to-earth pilots out there on both sides that see the benefits of both configurations, and that at the end of the day, in the case of the NX Cub, it boils down to personal preference. To give my honest opinion on this airplane, if I were to buy or build a carbon Cub, I'd probably still go with the conventional gear simply because of the cool factor. But like Mike said before the flight, the data shows that 85% of the pilot population does not fly tailwheel aircraft for one reason or another, so I honestly cannot find a good reason against the production of this aircraft. The market is there. It's fun to fly, easy to fly, and in many ways it's just as capable as the other carbon cubs, so why not give the option? Having flown the airplane, I think it's great. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this airplane. I'd be curious to hear thoughts from both nose wheel pilots and tail wheel pilots. If you liked this video, be sure and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. If you'd like to support this channel, you can head over to aviation101.com store and shop merch and gear there. Until next time, I want you to stay happy, healthy, and current. And of course, stay proficient, and we'll see you in the next video. Fly safe.